Welcome back, Jeff Frick here on the ground at the Sheridan Palace in San Francisco. We're at the Bright Edge Share 14 conference where they're talking all about SEO optimization and content uh, marketing. And I'm joined here by Lonnie Stark, Director of Product Marketing from Adobe and a partner of Bright Edge, so yeah. thanks for stopping by. Oh, well thanks for inviting me, Jeff. So you're doing a panel later today. Hi. So for the folks that didn't make it to the conference, it'll be at 2015. What are you talking about in the panel? Um, well, we're going to be specifically talking about the evolution of the customer journey and how content needs to change to support that. So as people get more devices and they're um, you know, using different digital experiences, how does that really change behavior and what do companies need to do about that? So Adobe's been at the front edge of, of content and content generation and pretty fonts all the way back to forever. Yes. So how is that journey changing now that we've got our phones, we've got our iPads, our seven inch pad, our 10 inch pad, our laptop, our home computer. How is that really affecting content marketing? And then the other piece of it is as there's more kind of user generated content trying to get integrated into the program, how does this all come in together? Yeah, a great question. So we've been involved with content both on the creative cloud and the marketing cloud side. And um, one of the things I think that's changed is brands are really struggling with how do I get relevant content out to all of these different devices. Um, so really thinking about how um, you do bite-sized pieces of content, like the same message, but you might have an Instagram, you might want to share something on social channels, you may want to have deep reports, and so that's really important. Um, so the mobile, supporting that mobile piece of it. Um, and then another, I think, is the speed. Right, so we've spent a lot of time working in partnership with Bright Edge, thinking about how do we really uh, compress the time needed to, to go from an idea to creating it to actually delivering through all the channels, and then seeing the analytics, seeing what's really actually um, resonating, and being able to really target that to the right audiences. Now, when you break stuff up into into the snackable bites, as we like to call them, yeah, I call them snackable too. You like Everybody that too? Like snacks, we like that. Right? We, we'll break this interview actually yeah. into snackable bites. Yeah, they want to call like little bugs. Bugs don't nobody likes, but snacks everybody likes. Everybody right? likes snacks, especially uh, <laughs> their tasty ones. Yes, but. Is there an expectation of a different type of, of content on the different device? Um, we talked to the San Francisco Giants uh, a little while ago and they said, you know, they like to use their Instagram for kind of showing behind the scenes. Yes. So they've got a very different kind of uh, content agenda, if you will, based on the medium that they're using. I wonder if you yeah. could share some best practices or some of your insights there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are times when some of the brands we talked to wanted to do responsive design, right, for being able to just share content across different devices. So that works at least as a foundation. The second is uh, thinking more about these snackable bites. So um, with Adobe, we also do a lot of content marketing ourselves. Right. So we have something called the Adobe Digital Index, which is a report we pulled out, you know, a couple pages, you gotta sit down, you have to read it, Right? But we also generate a lot of Insta, um, Instagrams of, uh, or infographics right. of um, key insights that get shared. And so those might get shared on social channels. People see if they're interested, they'll actually go and click and find out more. And I think um, a great example, which is not an Adobe example, but it's out there, is the ALS challenge. Right, right. right? Have you done yours yet? I have not. I will donate. Do not challenge me. I will donate. No. Um, but that's You're a You're like great the last person. I think there's like four people I'm that so haven't done it yet. Are you, have you done it yet? Yeah. Yes, of course. You have done it. <laughs> I'm like... So, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. But no, the ALS I think is a great example where it's actually a very serious condition and right. there's a lot of things written about it, but it was really hard for, to drive awareness around it. And now with something like these videos that people are posting, which are user generated, right, right. on all these different channels, like I actually went on to ALS.org to find out more and actually read something much deeper that I wouldn't have otherwise read. So I think brands need to really think about how to address people that may not even be aware with something that's bite-sized, that is relevant but quick. Right. And then also have that deep um, uh, content as well. And I've seen that with um, publishers as well. So brands, uh, so publishers talk about long form which are like 20 page articles right. and they're great. Like you know, on a weekend right. you really get into the Vanity into it. Fair uh, yeah, version, right? Yeah, right, you get into the meat, right? right? But you know, sometimes you need the quick tweets and the quick things that will get people even interested in making that kind of commitment. So talk a little bit about the user generated stuff and how brands do incorporate that in because it is interesting and then too, I don't know if you've got any insight on virality of why some of these things just go bananas uh, yeah. and others don't and it's, it's not necessarily obvious kind of what the rhyme or reason is. Yeah, um, I have a couple of thoughts on why things go, um, uh, become much more shareable. I think one is there's an element of fun, you know, and, and people want things that they 
think are, you know, humor goes a long way. Um, the second I think is brand association. So um, if it's something that will make someone feel like, oh, if I share this, it reflects well of me as well. Whether it is a cause they care about, whether it is something that makes them sound more intelligent, um, things of that sort get shared. And I think some things are useful. So most people, um, you know, when you, your social community are of people, friends, colleagues, people you know, so you don't really want to spam them, right? So you're right, only sharing right. things that are actually amusing, useful, or says something about yourself. Um, as far as user-generated content, how brands are using it, I think more and more brands, um, and, and, and you know, I've watched Coca-Cola talk about this as well, right? Where a lot of brands in the past have been, hey, this is our brand, it's protected, right. and we are going to you know, broadcast out to you our message. And that hasn't worked as well now, and as in needing to really incorporate user general kind of to support the brand. And it's not just um, amplifying the brand message, but also gain commitment from your customers. Because if they feel like they're contributing to the meaning of the brand, right. they become a lot more committed as right. well. Right. Yeah, it's almost like you, as a measure, you're waiting for people to take your content and really user generate it, you know, remix it. And then you th I always think of like logos, how hard it used to be to get a logo of any company. Yeah. Now they're all over the place, yeah, right? Yeah. You just go on there and find it. Well, thanks for stopping by. Bonnie Stark, Director of Product Marketing from Adobe. Uh, appreciate your insight and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, Jeff. So I'm Jeff Frick here on the ground at the Sheridan Palace at the Bright Edge Share 14. Be right back. <laughs>